I'm going to continue with my next part of the Jesse James series and then I'm going to take a pause. I would like to be able to tell you some more stories about some of the bank robberies, train robberies, stagecoach robberies, but actually there are no more stories that either I've heard or I can remember hearing of any particular interest. Uh, the only other thing I could even connect with it is as a kid um, in the car with various relatives they would point out locations like this is where a stagecoach used to ride by or this is where they uh, the James gang and the younger gang rode across this particular field which I couldn't even take you back to the places that existed because it just uh, well look at that <laughs> just cut that guy right off because it was just a field to me typical driving in Chicago so I'm going to move on to another subject and then I'm going to pause for a little bit because I begin a trip in about four weeks and towards the end of that trip I will be back in the region I used to live when I was a kid and I'm going to make an effort to go to the James Farm and include that in the series and also go to the Jesse James Museum Bank and uh, get some of the material on that film as much as they'll let me film. Probably as a vlogger almost enough to get kicked out if possible, but I'll do what I can. So after this one, it's going to be a pause. So today, what my subject about Jesse James is, and uh, Frank James and the rest, is talking about guns. And if you will notice, if you've been to museums and stuff like that, like I have, I always try to, if I'm, at, I'm traveling, I try to go to a museum, if there's any kind of museum of weaponry or guns or anything like that, because I just, I really like that kind of thing. And I noticed there was never hardly any Jesse James guns on display, or really, um, I think, for that matter, I don't think I've ever actually seen a Jesse James gun on display coming from him. And I asked a friend of mine that is into restoring Civil War revolvers that got me interested in guns and shooting. I asked him why that was, that you can find guns to a lot of the other outlaws, but trying to find a Jesse James gun in a museum display is near impossible. And the reason he said that that was is because of the fact of Jesse James' mom, Zerelda. Right after Jesse James passed away, collecting memorabilia for outlaw memorabilia for people even back in the time of the outlaws was a real uh, booming business and it's even more so now and obviously if you have any kind of uh, actual objects that you can prove belong to an outlaw they would be worth a small fortune so when Jesse James died collectors would start coming to his mom's house offering money for any guns she had that belonged to Jesse James and she would give them this sob story. She'd come to the to the door and let them in and give them this big sob story about how she hated to part with it but you know she really needed the money bad so she would go and pull a dresser drawer open and unwrap a, a gun that had a scarf around it and a Cheerfully hand it to the collector who was willing to pay a lot of money for this Jesse James gun. And they would leave very happy for all the money they spent. And uh, Zerelda would be very happy for all the money she got for the gun. And then what she would promptly do after that is walk down to the local hardware store which in those days, and even when I was a kid, hardware stores sold guns too. And she would promptly uh, purchase a cheap old uh, junky kind of gun for just a few dollars, bring it back home, wrap it up in that same silk hanky, put it in the drawer and be ready for the next sucker to come by and buy a genuine Jesse James gun. So people said the, the problem with the Jesse James gun is there's so many supposedly genuine Jesse James guns out there that were really Zerelda's guns for a short period of time till she unloaded them on the suckers 
And as a matter of fact, even at the Jesse James farm, there were originally three guns supposedly belonging to him on display. And a tourist, uh, I think this was in the 80s this happened, maybe early 90s, a tourist came by and questioned two of the guns because he was pretty knowledgeable on guns. And he said, I, I really believe that these particular guns were manufactured at about the date that Jesse James died or maybe after that. So it would be very unlikely that he actually ever carried or used these guns. And uh, whoever was in charge at the time looked up the uh, dates of manufacture based on the serial numbers of the guns. And sure enough, uh, it would not have been possible just because of the dates that these guns would have ever belonged to Jesse James or he would have carried them anywhere. So two of the guns out of the three on display at the time had to be taken out of the display. And there was quite a dispute over this too because uh, those two guns were handed over by family members. I think one of them was handed over by his son who was named Jesse too. So um, the only logical explanation is uh, somebody stole it from him or uh, he got took or something like that before he gave it to the James Farm to put in their museum. So and collectible items like that, there's always a lot of people that are uh, getting took because you need a thing when you're, when you've got collectibles from an outlaw, and especially like a gun, you need a thing called provenance. Now provenance is some kind of proof that establishes a connection with the gun. If you also have photographs to go with it, that's even better provenance. What would really help if you had an outlaw gun is if you got it from either a family member of the outlaw themselves which helps. I mean, obviously, you know, the Zerelda story tells you that that doesn't always work. But also if you had some kind of a letter dating back to uh, the time that the gun existed to where maybe a family member or uh, sometimes guns actually come from family members of sheriffs and marshals. For example, maybe a marshal will uh, catch a fairly famous outlaw and then obviously confiscate his guns and then later on uh, keep them for himself. And so if you had a letter from a sheriff or a marshal to another family member talking about the gun in detail enough to identify that particular gun and you had that letter to go with it or uh, maybe a certified copy if the family member wouldn't give you the letter with the gun for provenance, maybe you could have a notarized copy of the letter to go with the gun. That would help a lot. If there were pictures of the outlaw themselves with the gun, um, that works particularly well if the gun has special identifying marks to uh, that particular gun, like uh, especially any kind of, uh, maybe if the gun was dropped and there's cracks in the stock or there's some kind of damage on the barrel, um, if the gun had some kind of special engraving if the person, uh, say, just even took a knife and carved their initials on the side of the stock of the gun or the side of the grips of a, a pistol, revolver, and you saw that in a photograph with the outlaw holding it and you could compare that to the uh, gun that the person is trying to prove was an actual outlaw gun, all those kind of things help. But in the Jesse James category of collectible guns there is just uh, the provenance is just uh, so weak as to be almost uh, pitiful in 99% uh, of the cases so unless something were to uh, happen in the future I don't really know the story about Frank James and his guns uh, I don't recall seeing any of them in any of the museums I've been in either so um, I don't know what the story behind that is too I mean likely if uh, Zerelda did the thing with the Jesse James thing. If she had a collector that was particularly ambitious, maybe she would even uh, do a story about Frank James. But the thing is, he was he was still living up until uh, a couple of years after his mom died. So it would be likely that the collectors would come to him and get the guns. So I don't know what kind of uh, deal he was working out there, but. Uh, it was his brother, Jesse, that died early, so that was the ones that people really wanted, most of all. So what I will do... Oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to talk about too, about um, who is the better shot. I guess according to uh, 
most people that were living during that era between Frank and Jesse James, supposedly Frank was the better shot. And at uh, 40 paces, he could keep keep his shots um, inside a dinner plate. I guess that would, what, that would be about nine inches around, something like that, 40 paces, be maybe approximately 40 yards, maybe slightly closer, which might not seem like much accuracy. People have criticized that, saying, well, uh, you know, modern handgunners can do a lot better than that, too. I mean, they can keep it in a, a small bullseye circle if they're very good. But you got to remember, um, he was shooting shots with a black powder gun. So every time you'd shoot a shot, there was this cloud of smoke that would kick up in front of you. So as you shot each time after that, your each succeeding shot, it's harder and harder to see that target. And uh, by the time you're to the sixth shot, you're probably just shooting through a cloud, uh, barely seeing your target. Plus the other fact too was he was noted for that kind of accuracy even under stress. And it seemed like uh, Jesse was uh, a competent shot. I never heard any actual uh, people talking about how small of a group he could keep or anything like that, but uh, they both obviously under pressure, which is the real hard part. I mean, anybody can shoot targets when you're standing still and there's a target some distance from you, but what about when you're riding a horse and guys are shooting at you and you're trying to shoot back? According to legend, Jesse James actually could do like in the wild uh, West shows and in the movies that he could actually hold the reins in his teeth and actually shoot with both hands at the same time with two revolvers, which in a lot of battles, it's not so much the accuracy as the fact that you can at least keep your shots in the general direction and fire into the crowd of whoever you're fighting against. So being able to do that kind of thing under pressure, I think a lot of our uh, top shooters in pistol and revolver would do very poorly if they had to actually shoot and try to take out bad guys under the stress, the movement, the riding the horse, everything else and all the action going on around you and trying to not get shot yourself. I think that would really, uh, I think your accuracy level would go way down if it wasn't something you were used to dealing with. So I would say for the times and conditions they lived in, I would say both of them were considered very good shots. So I will continue this series on in about four weeks and then we'll uh, go on up from the middle part to the very last part of Jesse James' life and maybe I'll stop in St. Joe too and get a chance to see um, they still have the house preserved where he was assassinated.